I'm Heather Cox. You are on the Microsoft Office Hours community call. It is July 30th, 2020. Um, my wonderful co-host Dave Perlman is out this week, but thankfully we have an amazing community and I would like for them to, uh, my two co-hosts for this week, um, to give a quick intro. Deb. Hey, I'm Deb McLennan. I work at SUNY Oneonta and I am really happy to be here with you today. And Steve, who's always usually working that <laughs> office hours uh, tower for us. That's right. So I work for Ithaca College in uh, Microsoft 365 administration on the productivity side. Perfect. Thank you guys so much for helping me out this week while Dave is away. I am very excited to introduce our speakers from today for today. Um, they are from Forsyth County, Georgia, which is not far from where I live. We are uh, around the Atlanta area if you are not familiar with that. Um, but we have Tim Fleming, who's going to talk to us about the things that they're doing with Power BI. I do know that our friend Mike Evans from Forsyth is on the call as well. So Mike, you are welcome to join in on that conversation. But Tim, I would love for you to come off of mute. And if you are wanting to share your screen to show us some things, then I am going to turn it over to you, Tim. It is all your show now. Awesome. Thank you so much, Heather. First of all, can you hear me okay and can you see my screen? Perfect. Both. We can hear you perfectly and we can see your screen. Awesome. Okay. Today, what I want to talk about a little bit is the work that we were able to do with uh, uh, Microsoft in looking at two separate functions. The function number one would be our district dashboard, which we're going to cover first and kind of go through a few highlight areas of that. Uh, this is going to be an overview. We're not going to go to the technical aspect. It's going to be more about how we use it as a district. We can talk later at the technical side if more people are interested in that. But I feel like that you'll get or gain a lot, whether you're a small school district, a very large school district, or a university. I think you'll gain a lot from the product and what we've been able to do with it. So first, we'll do the district dashboard side. Then we will do the predictive analytics side, which is our latest um, development, which I just it blows me away still that we were able to do that with Microsoft's help and really a lot of their guidance. We were able to pull off something I thought was impossible. So first of all, let me hit you with uh, with the district dashboard and some some overview into our district. You'll learn a little about Forsyth County Schools while we go through this. You'll see we have about 50,000 students. We're about the sixth largest school district. Um, in the state of Georgia. Um, and we created this dashboard to be kind of an overview page. The idea was that if you're a principal or a leader in the district and you just want to give some basic information about how many males and females we have, how many um, the uh, ESOL, gifted, 504, SPED, what are our English language arts scores look like versus our ninth grade EOC tests, which are end of course, and as y'all know, end of grade. <clears throat> what is our graduation rating or CCRPI rating? That's the idea we created this. About a year ago, my boss, Mike Evans, who's on the call now, looked at, looked at our group and he said, there's got to be a way to look at all these different sources of data that we have and bring them together in a way that we can use the data to make good decisions. We had data in ClassLink, in Infinite Campus, our learning management system, and school pace, and school city. You get the idea, as I'm sure all of you have it. It goes on and on and on. And they all live separate from each other. And it really makes it hard to be able to, um, to do anything with the data as it relates to each other. So he basically said, how can we pull all that together and really make something meaningful that our schools can use, our principals can use? And this was the first page we created. This was our first shot at it. We said, hey, let's just give an overview and let's see how that goes. Um, it was interesting because automatically with Microsoft's tool, you're able to click on any section that you want to. And it actually sorts the rest of the page off that section. That was inherent in what it did. So we didn't have to do any special training and learning and, you know, spending lots of time trying to figure out how to make this happen. It worked. When you clicked on the female section, I now know how many males are gifted, how many 504, how many sped. I know their test scores versus the male. 
You can also hit the control button and look at ethnicity or an, any other factor that you want to, and it will sort that as well. So that was really cool. We were like, right off the bat, we were in awe. We were like, okay, this is great. We were able to create a page that looked really cool and it get interesting. But of course, as you know, it really doesn't answer many questions, although it gives you kind of a good overview into what the school district, you know, looks like from a, a large scale. So from there, we said, well, what's the next step that we need? And the next step seemed to be from the group of people that we were working with. They said, we need to be able to drill down to the individual student. We need to know more about the kid, the kids themselves and what's going on with them. So after a week or so of planning and drawing out and working again with Microsoft and our partner, Pragmatic Works, and we can talk more about what Pragmatic Works did, we created this page. This was meant to be the drill down into the kid. Um, now I'm careful data I show you. This is actually my boss's son. He's given us permission to look at his data, so you will see him all throughout the presentation. Um, but I will keep the rest of the students information from you because that I do not have permission to show it. So this page gave us some really big details off the top. It gave us whether he was male, ethnicity, whether he was ESOL, gifted, 504, SPED. It gave us the grade level. It gave us what his scores were with the uh, EOG assessment. And we did this. It took us a while to figure this out, but we basically sorted this by year. But you're able to sort it by score or by year so you can put Englishes together or you could put all the math together. So depending on how you sorted it, that came automatic with a Power BI and what they were able to offer. So from there, we um, went and got the EOC. We've got their current grade. We feel like this is really important. Like how are they doing in their classes? Are they passing? Are they failing? So this is their current grades, the last that we have. So this would have been since we're in the summertime, this was the last of the school year. Um, this is what um, we were able to to see. We it shows SAT if they took it. It shows whether they're SST or IST. And if you're not in K-12, you're probably going, what in the world is all this and EOG and EOC? It's all test scores and, and, and stuff we have to report to the state of Georgia and to the federal government. Um, it also looks at the number of days absent, excused versus unexcused and GPA. So this was our first stab at what what do we want to know about the kid, uh, the individual student themselves. Now, you'll notice it has this little section here that says grad prediction level. I'm not going to cover that just yet. And we'll come back towards the end of it because that is our prediction, uh, predictive analytics section. We just finished and I'll take you into that and show you what we were able to do. And I think you'll really enjoy that. That was really cool. I'm going to try to make sure I keep up with our time and and get through as I can. So we did this for secondary academic and we did a primary academic because we really felt like they needed different things. You know, uh, the primary didn't need to necessarily know the EOG or EOC score. So we removed that. So we kind of just customized them a little bit. The next section we did was the behavior. Now, Jackson, being a fantastic young man, does not have many much behavior. So I'm going to actually scroll out, which I've already done for you, into a big picture and look at a school as a whole. So we were able to start looking at things like, well, how much discipline do we have by, you know, by incident classification? So vandalism versus fighting versus tobacco versus what's the classification? And then what happened to the students at the school based on what we, what happened, you know, what we, what they did. And then we sort, we actually added these blanks so we can sort them by level. We were curious, like, how about males versus females? Which ones, you know, have the, the most discipline? What about ESOL? What about gifted? What about 504 and special needs students? So, so we basically looked at every category we felt like the school district would want to know. for this school and of course you could drill you could drill down into the student or you could look bigger picture at the whole district this school last year basically had 806 students I'm sorry 806 incidents that 347 students actually were the ones who did the incidents and you can by clicking you can drill down a little closer into 
Well, what happened when they had tobacco? And you can see how many got in school suspensions versus out of school suspension. So that was the idea was to basically look at this as kind of a um, a look into the behavior of the students and help the schools look at kind of big picture what needed to be done to uh, to um, to figure out you know what when this is happening what's happening and how much is happening for either the student level or the school level as a whole. From there big ask and that was really the first things we created those were kind of our first four or five screens and then we got the big ask from the counselors and they were like you got to have some way that I can look at credits. Are students ready to graduate? Are they not ready to graduate? You know, that's what we need to know. So you will notice again, I'm using Jackson here. What's interesting about this is we, uh, we taught the machine, we taught the server to determine whether they were either not a senior or if they were a senior, were they on track for graduation or off track? So that's kind of the three things it shows. It says on track, off track, or not a senior. And the idea is that to graduate from Forsyth County Schools, you need these colored blocks. You need four math, four language arts, four science, four elective, uh, three CTAE, one PE, and three social studies. And then we created these in what we kind of looked at as cylinders. And we said, this student, Jackson, took, he attempted one social studies and he received it. He attempted one health and PE and he received it. He attempted two English and he received it. And based off of what the student did here and what was required to graduate, able to make a prediction if they're senior, whether they're on track or off track for graduate, for graduation. That was our first kind of sticking our toe into the water of kind, trying to make some prediction about whether students would graduate or not. And I think you'll see in just a few minutes, we took that to like a whole different level um, by what we were able to do. But this was where we kind of started looking at what does a student have? What do they need to graduate? And, you know, can we decide if that student actually is ready to graduate? And that was pretty interesting as we begin to do this, because then we did things like if they attempted to English but only got one, and that is a required weight, then we'll turn the whole block red. So we kind of played around with that, and it really became a pretty cool tool that our counselors are able to bring kids in, and instantly they know by seeing red that you are, have failed something you have to have to graduate. And so that was kind of a, a, pretty, um, a pretty good move towards what the actual needs of the counselors were. The second thing that we were asked <clears throat> by the counselors, the assistant principals, and the principals were kind of, how do we look at the student as a whole? Not just what their credits are and whether they're ESOL or whether they're gifted. How do we look at the student as a whole and tell, are they on track or off track and are things going well? So that's where we came up with the student performance tab. And from this tab, we basically created four cylinders and again we're looking at Jackson just so I can keep you know the students who um, we, I do not have permission from out of here but we looked at four categories this being a category each one of these cylinders being a category and we basically said what are the things that you really care about and they would say we really want to know what their GPA is how have they done over time and so we looked at GPA and we were able to calculate the GPA using the data that we have in Infinite Campus. So all of their former grades were able to pull up and calculate their GPA. And then we basically taught the, um, the model to decide one of five things. Are they college and career ready? That'd be the top level. Are they a little under that? Are they on track? Are they a little under that at risk of off track? A little under that? off track and then the last one is extremely so each one of these areas here it actually makes one of those five recommendation based on what it sees so you can see Jackson did, is doing pretty well so he has a 3.57 GPA so it determines that is college and career ready he's good to go don't mess with him and everything's gonna be good um, you can see based on his scores he's on track for graduation that's a little less um, I assume that it's he at one point in time had a B and that's probably why I gave on track and not college and career ready. 
that should be college and career ready and probably would be if we recalculated it um, after, during the summertime, but we really haven't done that since school ended. Um, and then we looked at absences and then we gave one of those five predictions and then we gave the discipline and we did the same one of the five predictions under discipline. Unfortunately, or fortunately, I guess it depends on how you look at it. Um, he doesn't have a lot of these categories to show you, so it's kind of tough to give you more data. But as dad's probably like, well, that's good. He doesn't need any discipline. So, um, so I think that uh, the idea was to look at more at the broad spectrum of the kid. How are they doing overall and do they need intervention into their lives? So this is kind of how we started off. We did this. We looked at some trends. We looked at a, a category called students in need. I can't show that right now because it has all the students in need. Those are students who have the lowest GPA, the lowest or the most discipline referrals, the most amount of missed days, absences, and it looks at unexcused versus excused and then the ones with the lowest grade. So it lists all the students' names, and right now I, I, I don't have the data obfuscated, so I can't show you that data. But that's okay because I actually want to take the rest of our time and take you into the predictive analytics section of it. You'll notice that we actually put that on this page, and we put it on our very first page, which was our academic page when we're looking at the student. So let me tell you how we came about this. We talked to Microsoft and we said, hey, we think that we think it's possible. And to tell the truth, I didn't really know if it was. I just was kind of going along with the plan. But we think it's possible to predict based off what we know about students, whether they are going to graduate and are not going to graduate. So are they going to graduate and not going to graduate? And how sure are we that they are one way or the other? So we we took basically 10 years of data from Forsyth County Schools. We pulled 10 years worth of data and we looked at every student that graduated for 10 years and every student that did not graduate for 10 years. And we fed all that through Microsoft's analysis services and through SQL database and into Power BI. And we basically began to create and allow the the um, model to learn what makes a student graduate and what makes a student or what hurts a student from graduating at Forsyth County Schools. So our students, 10 years worth of data, and we ran them all through there and it came up with a list of things that it saw was important. And then we took all of our current students and we ran it through that same model and we said, using what you learned over the 10 years of data that we fed you, Tell us if these students are going to graduate. What it did. So I'm going to take you into uh, the prediction graduation for Jackson. So for Jackson, here's how we get basically came up with the areas. Number one, we said it needs to make a, a prediction right off the bat so, so people can look at it. And it says he graduate. So it, it predicts him to graduate. And it says the second thing we wanted to come up with well, how sure are you that he's going to graduate? And he's giving him, the machine is giving him a four out of five that he is going to graduate. So it's pretty sure he's going to make, make it. And then we said, well, that's really not good enough. We actually want you to put him in the columns. And it actually has five columns, uh, one column being an absolute certain. And that's kind of a five out of five. The next one being moderate confidence. It's pretty confident in the four to 3.7 area that it that it's right is basically what it's saying. And then we said, so make a prediction, show the area here, and then basically list out all the things that you say that the, that the model says either hurt or helped towards graduation. So you can see the blue is helped and the red is hurt and kind of the middle is kind of maybe it counts maybe it doesn't count so for instance his gpa helped him it helped him a pretty good amount that's his gpa 3.57 so it helped him a pretty good amount you can see that's the longest area whereas exam exemption which is really interesting counted against them so let me just this is kind of interesting i didn't even actually prepare this so this is cool it saw that kids who were exempt from their final exam 
numerous had a much higher graduation rate than kids who did not, who were not exempt. Well, if you think about that, that kind of makes sense, right? Because the kids who had the highest grades in class were the ones who had no absences were the ones who get exempt from their final exam. And they're saying, you know, go ahead and head on home. You're good to go. You're going to, you know, you're going to uh, pass the class. And those students, after doing that, their ninth grade year, their 10th grade year, their 11th grade year, their 12th grade year, probably graduate. Well, for whatever reason, he has not been exempt. That's hurting him. He has not been exempt enough. That doesn't mean he's not ever been exempt. It just said, well, we don't see you've been exempt enough to count for you. Now, it has to take into consideration what grade he's in. So it says, OK, he's a 10th grader. So he's only had the opportunity taking seven periods a day or seven periods a year times two years is 14 periods. So it says he's only had 14 chances to be exempt, but it still counts it as, well, we think he should have been exempt more than he was. So it counted that against him. So as it went through here, there were many things that we learned or that it came up with that were kind of shocking to us. For instance, it sees field trip as a really big indicator in whether a student graduates. This is on every single one of the students. If, if they took field trips, it counts that for them almost 99% of the time. And what's amazing about that is right now, what are all the schools and districts cutting out? We're, we're cutting out field trips because we can't social distance, because it costs a lot of money, because you got to have a chaperone. You, you get the idea. I understand why we're doing it. I completely understand and support that. But it, after 10 years of looking at our data, it found that, hey, this is a really important thing. And so it counts it, it weights it pretty high. Um, it looks at years attended. What we found is students, the longer they're with us uh, in Forsyth County Schools, the better they, the chance it is for them to graduate. It looked at all these different indicators and basically were able to put together a model that we're able to run every single student through all the way back to about fourth grade. So I can pull up fourth graders. Now, sometimes I have to let you know, number one, that and I'm going to stop right after this. So we got questions. Um, it's it's we ran the model and it was right. Ninety six percent of the time we had to do some checking to figure that out. But we found out the model was right. Ninety six percent of the time. So you got to keep in mind four percent. It's just wrong. We don't know why it's just wrong. It makes the wrong prediction. And a student can always change this just because they may be listed as non-graduate, doesn't mean they can, can't turn it all the way around and graduate. That happens all the time. Every single year we have students who do, do that, and that's important. So, um, so this is hopefully meant to serve as a guide so counselors can meet with them and say, we got to help you kind of figure out the things that will help you graduate and get you back on track. And we can start doing that now all the way down to the fourth grade level because it looks at each grade level, it looked at those students from fourth grade and it predicted whether they, it saw whether they graduated or not for 10 years. And now it's able to use that data to basically, um, you know, make prediction about the, the current students. So I'm gonna stop there. I, 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 we could go on, but I wanna stop so we got time for questions. First thing I wanna say is thank you. Um, Mike, if you're still on the call, I wanna say thank you for allowing Tim to share your son. You've obviously done a wonderful job. He's got great scores there. So thank you for allowing him to um, share that. Um, one of the things that I feel very, very, very strongly about is using data to inform our decisions. I wish that was happening more in um, the world, um, <laughs> but I love that it's being done in education where we are able to make predictions and help students sooner rather than later because the idea is to educate to to support and to learn so the fact that you are doing this and you've taken this data is amazing um a, a question that has been put into the um chat you are also i'll read the question out loud but those of you who also are here and you want to raise your hand and come off of mute we'll call on you as well um when you say quote it counts as a factor for or against is that based on data you've studied or data from some automated predictive model? In other words, how do you determine which factors lead to success versus failure? 
Yeah, that's a good question. And that's what was really interesting about this pro project. Because if you were to ask me, I've been a principal, assistant principal, I was a teacher for a while. I would have listed all these other things. I can guarantee field trip wouldn't be one of them. And I can guarantee a lot of the ones that were in there, I probably wouldn't see and, and have written down. So what we did was by looking at, by, by running through the model, 10 years worth of our students, and we basically ran through 10 years of kids who graduated, 10 years of kids who didn't graduate, all the data that we had, it decided what it saw was important. At first, I was like, well, I don't think it should. I should decide what's important. But the more we ran through it, what I found out was it was right 96% of the time. And when we run our students, so we took another group of students and we were able that we knew whether they graduated or didn't graduate. And we actually ran it through it and it predicted them right 96% of the time. Where none of us are that good, right? And, and I was thought I was a really good principal, but I couldn't be right 96% of the time. We each have our own biases and we each have things that, you know, we know about the student and maybe that that hurts us. And we'd say, well, that that student's mom is, you know, really tough on him. I, he probably won't be successful. You know, things like that. Whereas the computer, you know, that doesn't do that. It just looks at what it understands. It decides what's important and what's not important. We're actually doing, I'm actually trying to get Microsoft. And so if y'all want to actually you know, throw in a good word for us to Microsoft. We're trying to get them to actually pay for us to go through this list right here, to go through the list. And what we want to know is now that we know what the machine says, and it's different for every kid. Every student has a different group. They're not always the same thing. It depends on a lot about the student and it makes the prediction. But I want to know how much does this actually matter? For instance, field trips. How much does field trip matter? I want to know, does it matter 5%, 10%, 20%, a thousand, you know, what does it matter? So I want, I'm asking Microsoft to help us um, come up with the funds to do one more big push on this. And let's actually get the data to see how much each one of these matter. And the list is bigger. And than it, so it picks a different list each time. So we've got a much bigger list to go through. Well, lucky for you, you've got myself and your AE on this call, so we're listening. So um, in the essence of time, we have three quick questions. If Tim, if you have time to answer those and then any additional questions, you are welcome to put them either in into the chat for the um, for the call itself or into our community channel so that we can make sure we're respectful of time. Um, Chad Smith raised his hand next. So Chad, if you would like to quickly come off of mute and ask your question. There we go. Hello, how's it going? Hope you can hear me. We we uh, got an EWS too, and it's you know it's always fun to see what's similar and different. You guys have done an amazing job here, and we uh, are looking getting into the predictive part of it. Um, I was curious, uh, just in, in the best way you can, most efficient way possible. How how did you lay out your your data um, for the predictive piece? As we've got a data table, and you know I'm trying to make sure I design mine in the best way possible, right? You guys have some lessons learned. And then secondly, um, what actual technology part are you using that Microsoft which does the the uh, you know the predictive part yeah those are both good questions so um, if can can uh, Heather number one if you can link uh, us up together I'll actually give you our documentation that shows oh. you and Fantastic. that will help you out the best we did a great job of documenting every single detail but just Love to let to you that. know because mm -hmm. I think it's important to to say it um, the products that you see on here are basically four different ones. It's Power BI is kind of the pretty view that you're seeing. You got the, anal the, the analysis services, which is kind of the back end, our repository where we're sticking everything. SQL is, is kind of the guide that leads it through to show it where to go. And then Power BI Premium, we ran the entire function through Power BI Premium. Um, because it gave us the resources we need to actually pull off all the workload that's going on on the back end. But every product that you see here is actually a Microsoft product. Even the, um, the predictive piece of it is all Microsoft products that we tied together. But and, I, and that predictive piece is the, analyst, is the analysis services? Is yes. that the part that actually is doing it, right? Yes. The actual correct. prediction yeah. part? Correct. Okay. Yeah, and it's basically a server that's on there that we trained to learn 
um, this particular, you know, this model that we wanted. And once it learned it, then we could run anything through it and it would use what it learned to make a prediction about what it saw. Awesome. Um, and then I think we had one more question that was in the chat. And just so you know, folks, I have dropped Tim's contact information both into the chat and into the community channel. Um, and um, the final question that we have came from Greg. It says, are you sharing this type of information across your district? Um, if so, how are you sharing Power BI? That's part one. Um, and you, I do believe you answered this slightly. What Power BI license are you using? And what Power BI license do you have assigned to your staff? Yeah, so those are good questions. And you actually, whoever that was, hit on one of the hardest things we had to do. So we share this. Every principal has this. Every assistant principal and every teacher has their student. But that was the hardest part we had to do. That's role level security. We had to actually tie together. We didn't want teachers seeing the whole district, so we only want you seeing the students that you have. And we wanted the assistant principal and principal to only see their students, and then district people can see everybody. So we basically went and created a role level security that tied everything to, together by class. So if you have a teacher for a class, then it knows that that's your teacher and it ties you to the teacher so the teacher can now see your data. And then we showed then we basically said, OK, that teacher, we know they're at this school. So this principal and assistant principal are assigned to them. So now those two people got access to the, the student and the teacher data because they were in line. So we basically tied together everybody on a kind of a back end model that that shows by class schedule. I guess schedule is better than class. Schedule is a better word by schedule where you are. And that's how you get to see it. So it's shared across the entire district. Um, and we bought the A5 license. A lot of different things. One of the things it gave us was Power BI for all of our teachers. So all of our teachers actually have a license of Power BI. But if you, you know, later we found out if you buy Power BI premium, you don't necessarily have to buy one for every single person. But we, we didn't really do premium at first. We had just a regular Power BI license, but now we have premium. But there's so many other features with A5 that we like, like advanced threat protection and stuff like that, that it was worth it just to go ahead and buy it, even if we don't necessarily need every single Power BI um, license to, uh, and to Tim, run it. Tim, did you do that through a SharePoint uh, or some uh, website that you guys went out and developed that? Or how did you dish, uh, push that out to your, your, your staff that you want to see this? This is a uh, SharePoint site they go to or what? No, it's not. It's it's uh, it's basically through. Let me back up. It's basically through a workspace. Workspace. Oh. Can, yeah. So a Power BI workspace. Yes, the Power BI workspace right here. So right, we right. created uh, basically a, a, a analytics dashboard. You can see we created many analytics dashboards for our district people. We have this one for school admin. This one. Um, and basically that's all they would see. I, you see a lot here for me because I'm working on different ones, but they would only see their one. They would mm -hmm. click on that and all of this would live inside there based on the role level security that they have. And this all came from Power BI Premium, correct? Uh, this was actually set up just with Power BI. You didn't have to have oh. Premium to do that. We did oh, all of this oh. with Power BI way before we got Premium. Uh, oh. We just did Premium for the horsepower in the background. That's all we did. Okay, um, because really you get the same features either way, but premium gives you your own servers, your own, you live in kind of your own environment and the more stuff you stick into it, you'll find out it kind of makes it nicer, cleaner and quicker. Um, just say, I know we're over time, but I, I would be remiss if I did not say number one, my, due to Microsoft and their work is why we got this done. Pragmatic works is a company we use to help us do a lot of the back end work and they were unbelievable. And then of course my boss and my superintendent, Mike Evans and Dr. Jeff Bearden have allowed us to go out and what really was pretty much, a, I don't really know if we're gonna do anything and it'll cost a little bit of money, but we wanna give it a shot. And they were like, yeah, sounds good. 
That's awesome. And I know that there are some hands up. I'm, I'm out of respect for time and out of respect for the fact that, that Tim and Mike have joined us on this call. Um, I have made sure to put both Tim's um, contact information and the website for Forsyth County into both the community call chat and the community call channel. Um, or you can reach out to myself um, and get that if you need that. Um, basically, I think maybe that just means everybody needs to buy that A5. I mean, go contact your local reps, get on A5. Um, you know, the, the next piece that we're really hoping to see more readily is that we want to have all of these dashboards embedded into Teams so that you can live, work, and breathe in Teams and do all of it all in one place because, you know, we love ourselves some Microsoft Teams. Um, so thank you for everybody. Uh, Tim, thank you for sharing. Mike, I know you were on the call. Thank you for allowing Tim to share um, your son's information. Jackson, tell, tell Jackson he is a wonderful child, clearly. Um, and so we appreciate it. And with that, I will stop the recording. Additional questions.